In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Once again this morning we hear the joyful message of Christ to us, to our hearts, and to all the world. That message which of the many in the gospel as recorded gives such hope to our life. When the Matthew records, not once, but as we read today, it was the second time he says this summary or uh, this outline of Jesus' ministry when he writes, Jesus went about all the cities and all the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. It's such a beautiful summary, a beautiful outline as he gives it in the gospel first and then repeats it again later. Jesus first teaches, he preaches the gospel of the kingdom, and then he goes about healing as the great physician. And that healing included the healing, of course, of these two men born blind who were healed and this mute brought to him who was possessed by demons. Of course, he preaches, he teaches, and the most probably famous, uh, wonderful of his teachings is known as the Sermon of the Mount, as Matthew recorded it uh, before he records all these great uh, healings that occurred. And so we have in the written uh, word of God, uh, the preaching, the teaching, and the healing all as one unit. And we need to understand, therefore, that the preaching, the teaching, and the healing are always connected, certainly in the gospel, and therefore connected in our Christ, the God-man. He preaches, he teaches the gospel of the kingdom to enlighten the souls of humankind, and he heals, then, our very bodies, the material aspect of our life. And so the church has always been, from the very beginning, concerned with healing, as we are today. But the healing of the soul and the body, the whole person, as we are created by God to be. And so we have countless examples of the church and its concern for health, the well-being, the wholeness of the people of God, of all of humanity. So you have, as early as uh, the fourth century, you have the establishment of hospitals. And then all throughout the Middle Ages, the establishment of hospitals. Like I can remember taking a group of, you know, this is in the Middle Ages. This was the first hospital, it says, in that region of the Balkans. The hospitals, in the monasteries, the responders, the healers, the caretakers, the monks, and the nuns. The church was always concerned about the health and well-being of her people, of God's people, of all of humanity. Oh, no, much more than that. They had enormous protocols, just like we do in hospitals. And the gospel, the teaching of Jesus Christ, one whole approach to healing. Because Christ reveals to us, as Matthew in his gospel so clearly points out, that he is concerned about the eternal dimension of every illness, the eternal dimension of all human healing, and that eternal dimension finds its place in the teaching. And so today in our world, under the circumstances uh, that we're not used to living, we have a lot of focus on the healing of the body. We have a lot of focus on protecting ourselves from disease as we hear day in and day out. And maybe what we would notice is, unfortunately, perhaps, that focus is only one side. It's on the healing of, it's on protecting us from a disease, a physical ailment. And sometimes that sort of overshadows the many other physical and all of the spiritual diseases that are in our world and have always been due to sin. The spiritual illnesses and diseases like spiritual blindness, where people cannot see the image of God in another person, their brother or their sister. Today we hear a lot, and we should hear, about the good science 
that is brought forth in order to better understand healing and protection from the diseases that we face in this world. But like all human things, science is also limited as they themselves understand. And science is uh, always dynamic. It's always changing. That's why we shouldn't be surprised that today it's one way and then tomorrow it's another way because there's always new discoveries. There's always new things that the scientists, particularly in the medical field, are finding to help us. And the church always understood this. And that's why it always incorporated the good science, as limited as it may be. Because science is not enough for healing. It's important. It's essential. But it is not healing. There is more to healing. And the gospel message clearly states that. You see, science is data-driven. and They verify the data, as we hear so much about in the news today. But it all measures and is defined by the material, by processes and objects of material nature. But healing is much more than that. The fullness of healing only comes when... There is meaning and purpose. And science gives us any good things. But it's the gospel that gives us the meaning and the purpose of those good things. It's Jesus Christ who identifies the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God. That teaching which gives meaning and purpose to all healing, to all life, to everything that we as human beings experience. So teaching, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all the diseases of the people is one action. One unified action of the one person, uh, the Son of God. Long ago, they knew this so very well. They knew it in their teaching as they elaborated on the gospel to make clear the great uses of science and the great need for healing of soul and body. And they taught us so well how to protect ourselves from the many tests that we will face in the world. And they even say, these fathers of the church, whom we honor uh, with such love and respect uh, today, again, in the cycle of the liturgical year, they teach us that uh, whatever the threat we might have, as now we have the threat of this coronavirus, all of it can serve for us to grow in the person of Jesus Christ. All of it, all of life can be for the glory of God, as is the testimony of the gospel. So we are called today to follow the science, yes. And what do we have in crowds, particularly keep a distance and wear a mask? Good science based on really verified data. But it's not enough. If we really want to be healed, if we really want the society, and this is as clear as the daylight today, to be healed, to be whole. Then we, the gospel message, the church adds three more things to that great list of science. So yes, wash your hands. And as, as we go about to our things, have faith. Faith heals. Love the Lord, number two, love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with everything, your very life. And number three, to really be healed, love your neighbor as yourself. That's healing. So we have to be able to understand the teaching, the preaching, and the healing are all one action. Unfortunately, to separate them. And that's why we may have healing of the body, but it does no good. That body will sooner or later die. Like it or not, that's the way it is. But when we have complete healing, we live forever because the gospel is the gospel of the eternal kingdom of God. So let us, dear brothers and sisters, as we look at the history of, of our glorious uh, faith with the teaching of the fathers, with the saints like Gabriel the archangel watching over us as the commander with Michael, the leaders of the bodless hosts, with the great phenomenal history of healing that we have in the church, 
going all the way back from the very beginning. Today, we heard from Matthew's gospel. Matthew, you know, was a tax collector, a sinner who repented and actually reflects his repentance in his gospel. But don't forget, another gospel writer, Luke, he was a physician. Luke was a doctor. He healed people. So we have a glorious tradition of healing. But we understand it in the only way that healing can be whole, true, whole, and forever. And that is summarized by Matthew so beautifully. And let us not forget it. Christ preaching, teaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and healing every disease among the people. To him be glory now and forever. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.